the next, the second phase, I'm, I'm aware of the shortage of time, so I'm going to try and skip one or two clips. The second phase uh, of um, when the partition was addressed was during the Indian New Wave. I won't go into the history of the Indian New Wave, but as a movement, uh, it began in 1969. It does not include Satyajit Ray and actually, um, but it actually begins in 1969 with the work of um, a film called Bhuvan Shom, Bradan Sen's Bhuvan Shom, Uski Roti, um, Mani, uh, Mani Calls Uski Roti, and Basu Chatterjee's Sara Akash, which launches this movement in 1969. This movement actually addressed uh, several really difficult social, cultural, and political issues of the time, which mainstream cinemas would have rather ignored. What, what were these themes? Gender and patriarchy, casteism, gender and caste exploitation, critiques of Hindu religious orthodoxies, repressed histories, particularly the partition, communalism, and prejudice against minorities, and also communal rights. And the, the clip that I'm going to show you is from Garam Hava, 1973. And it's a film that was um, directed by Ms. Satyu and his wife, Shama Zaidi, um, you know, worked on the screenplay. And uh, it was based on two short stories of uh, by Isma Chuktai, who also wrote this particular short story for the film. So she, she borrowed from two of her own short stories and wrote this. And uh, this is an iconic film. A lot of people generally think that Garb Hawa is the first film that dealt with the partition, which as you can see is not true. But nevertheless, it is an iconic film. And what's very interesting for us to raise here in the context, why in 1973 does the partition recur suddenly? Uh, so clearly in the 60s, partition was not talked about. And if you know the history of Bombay cinema, Kala, Shami Kapoor, the big hero at the end of the 60s, you have the entry of Rajesh Khanna and then Amitabh Bachchan in 1970. These are the big stars. So that's the cinema against which this emerges. Why in 1973 is this film made? Why did Isma Chuktai write this? Why did uh, Shama Zaidi and um, Satyu work on a film like this? And what's very interesting is a history that I want to just place out there very quickly, which is the Bhivandi riots of 1971. Bhivandi very close to here. Um, and um, Bhishan Sani wrote his no, novella, Tamas, after the Bhivandi riots. And in an interview, Bhishan Sani has talked about how he had repressed very consciously at one level, consciously, at another level, he didn't want to remember what he had gone through because that's a partition family. But when the Bhivandi riots took place, it, he said, I was not in control. I began to have nightmares. And it seemed as if my pen just took over and Tamas was, uh, you know, uh, was written almost involuntarily. And those memories came back and the fiction was done. So he's talking about the Bhivandi riots of 71 and it, uh, and then uh, it's the same context that I'm actually evoking for Isma Chuktai. So obviously the communal rights in post-independent India had shook once again, just like the demolition of Babri Masjid shook a lot of our generation. These riots actually had a very um, important impact on the artists of the time. And um, and so in so partition recurs at this particular point. Um, I have to decide about the clips. Okay, show her, Mama. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can skip Thomas. Okay, uh, it's of course a very very beautiful film. Very. It's towards the end. But isn't that I had already? Also, we must maybe show it because of the nineties, but point. Ah, we are not even Shokar, Shokar Ji's presence on screen and we must remember her. Okay, so um, the... Salim Mirza's family, a part of the family has gone to Pakistan. Um, the Bua has come back and Amina, who is the uh, protagonist here, uh, believes that she has come to take her back with her to Pakistan so that she can marry uh, her son. Of course, that is, she's already had one engagement that was broken because the family went away to Pakistan. Um, and she has, she has come to shop for her son's wedding. So, Shamshad's mother has, in Pakistan has, uh, 
has actually fixed his marriage to someone else so that her own daughter marries the brother of that girl. That's the reason. And we see Amina now go to her uh, room, look at the, uh, the trousseau that is laid out on her bed, pick all in. that she remembers this, um, she remembers this, um, uh, uh, she re recollects this particular moment and the uh, Kavali is played because through the Kavali a whole uh, sacred world view is evoked and implicitly the question really is what has religion given, given us, right? Uh, Amina takes her life and, um, and that is of course um, uh, it's as if the violence of the partition, the entire violence has been condensed and uh, is being articulated through her, uh, through her history. Very poignant moment. This is also uh, the moment when Balrat Sani had just got to hear of his own daughter's death, and he he was a professional. He went ahead and shot this very difficult uh, scene, um, despite the personal sort of tragedy. Um, so I talked about the Bhavani rights. 18, 1984, also very important. The Sikh carnage in Delhi. And, and the significance of that was that uh, for the Sikhs, this violence brought back for them the memories, of course, of the partition, but also uh, made uh, them feel that the nightmare of partition was not over. They were once again refugees, they were once again hunted, and, uh, and that the, uh, the nightmare of, of what they had been through was continuing and was very, very real. This moment of 84 suddenly transformed the discourses around the partition and a lot of people started working on the partition uh, at that time and um, uh, new narratives, new perspectives emerged, particularly those that were, uh, that had to do with the gender uh, histories of the partition, the violence borne by women during the partition. Uh, a lot of feminist scholars, for instance, Ritu Menon, Tala Vaseen, Urashi Batali, and others worked on, on this. Um, Govind Nehlani, uh, who makes uh, Tamas, um, so 1976, when uh, um, the novel, novel, novella uh, by Resham Sani wins a Sahitya Academy Award, creates no controversy, nothing. But when Tamas is, it was a six part TV series, when Tamas was released, of course, it created a huge controversy. After the first three episodes, it had to be um, uh, suspended for a while. There was a court case, and uh, it's a fantastic judgment when the judge actually uh, says, no, the, the series should go on, and it's a very important history. Uh, that's when the, so 87, 88 is the history of Tamas. Um, the first part of Tamas is uh, uh, in the realist mode. Uh, very politically and uh, very analytic about all the political forces, the Muslim, the Hindu, the Congress, so the Hindu right wing, the Muslim League, the Congress and the British, analyzing the forces that led to the partition. Second half of Tamas moves into a kind of melodramatic mode when the big exodus takes place and all the deaths and the violence and so on. I was going to show a clip, but I'll skip it. It was the women um, at the web, the Sikh women who jumped into the web. Now, this was actually based on a real episode, the Thoa Khalsa, in a very beautiful Thoa Khalsa. And in partition literature and in partition cinema, the trope of the web continues to haunt 
the landscape of Punjab. You see it in uh, in a Pakistani film called Khamush Pani, and you see it in Anup Singh's Kissa that revisits the, the partition. Um, the well as as in fact representing what uh, the his, historical uh, maybe the repositories of the memories of violence of the time. So th that what's very interesting to me is the way in which that trope of the well haunts this particular kind of landscape. Also, it's interesting that it is after 37 to 40 years of this Holocaustal event of the partition that a, uh, a very, very uh, robust discourse around um, violence began to develop. Also, and ironically, uh, discourse about community identities and prejudice against minority communities happened simultaneously because, let us not forget, and that will take me to the to the next uh, phase, um, by 1985, the Hindu right wing, the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, and the other uh, organizations of the Hindu right wing had begun their mobilization for the Ram Janma Bhumi movement. Right. Um, so, um, so in other words, what what is the role of the partition here? The partition at this point becomes a metaphor for contemporary communalism. So, in the films from the 80s onwards. Uh, there are some films in which partition is directly uh, represented, but in others, it's, it functions metaphorically. And it is through the partition. In fact, in Tamas 2, um, uh, Bhisham Sani had to come appear on screen at the end to say that actually he is addressing the contemporary. So we must learn from history so that we don't com uh, commit the same mistakes again. Um, I'll skip. Salim Lamey as well, very important film by Saeed Mirza about the Muslim community. It's a new wave, uh, what, what we have called the new wave Muslim social, uh, about what um, the Muslim community uh, was undergoing in Bombay and uh, uh, in contemporary Bombay. It's a, it's a film that re references the 1984 Bhivandi riots and it's actually present and it's a film about uh, the impact of this kind of violence on the Muslim community. And uh, the character of Salim is very interesting because he, of course, doesn't survive. He learns through this. He's a, a sort of a tapori kind of a figure who learns and understands in the course of the film the way in which Muslim youth are being utilized by very, very um, uh, Political, by political forces, both Hindu and Muslim, very heartlessly, very coldly, very brutally um, uh, used by, by these forces. And he refuses, he refuses to give in and then, of course, loses his life. Another very interesting film of this time is a film, very lovely film, um, by Sham Benegal called Mammo, 1994. So the new wave period, I would extend it to the 1994 at this point. When Mammo, the, the played by Farida Jalal, uh, is um, is uh, becomes a Pakistani, goes to Pakistan after her marriage, but after her husband dies and she becomes a widow, there is no place for her, and for her home is India, and the way in which the nation state de uh, defines home is very contrary to to the manner in which this woman Mammo defines her own home. The film is about that very interestingly. 